I'm Sarah, I'm a hospital pharmacist, and today I'll be going over all the different avenues and fields of pharmacy. Most of us know pharmacists as a stereotypical retail pharmacist that works at CVS, Walgreens, but there's much more to pharmacy than just retail pharmacy. So in addition to retail, there's a lot more opportunities out there as well and a lot of different fields that pharmacists can work in. So the one category I'm going to not elaborate on is hospital pharmacy just because my entire channel is about hospital pharmacists and what I do in my day to life. So you can go ahead and check out those videos there. So I'm not an expert in these other fields as well. I am a hospital pharmacist, so my specialty is hospital pharmacy, but I'll do my best to explain all the different areas um, that you can pursue as a pharmacist. And there's ambulatory care pharmacy. So this one is a clinical pharmacist that works in a clinic setting rather than the hospital. Ambulatory care pharmacists are the ones that see you in between your doctor visits. You know, right now there's a huge doctor shortage, especially with primary care. So oftentimes, you know, they don't have enough appointments or even enough time to go through um, and help treat patients with really complex disease states like diabetes, high cholesterol, or blood pressure. So this is where the ambulatory care pharmacist comes in. So there are certain ambulatory care pharmacists that specialize in different areas. So a diabetes pharmacist, hypertension pharmacist, heart failure pharmacist, the list goes on. So with those type of ambulatory care pharmacists, we're clinical and within our scope of practice, we can prescribe and adjust certain medications within that field. So for example, diabetes pharmacist is able to prescribe and adjust diabetes medications. So most ambulatory care pharmacists will go through a PGY-1 or a PGY-2 residency. Oftentimes, ambulatory care pharmacists will become board certified as well under BCACP. So it's pretty long, but it stands for Ambulatory Care Pharmacy Specialty Certification. If you enjoy interacting with patients, either in person or on the phone, then this path may be for you. And next, we have managed care pharmacy. Okay, managed care. Let's read the definition of managed care pharmacy. The practice of managed care pharmacy applies clinical and scientific evidence to support the appropriate use of medications to enhance patient and population health outcomes. What do managed care pharmacists do? Well, managed care pharmacists work with other healthcare professionals to provide a range of services that ensure that patients receive appropriate medication therapies conveniently and cost effectively. Here are all the different branches of managed care where you can find yourself working in. So if you're interested in pursuing managed care pharmacy, oftentimes most pharmacy students would join an organization called AMCP. It stands for Academy of Managed Care Pharmacy. All right, here are some snippets of the AMCP website explaining what they do. Feel free to pause and read through it thoroughly. So one, some of the things that they do is develop and implement evidence-based clinical programs and MTM programs. They'll work on patient safety initiatives. And they also communicate and collaborate with patients, prescribers, and pharmacists. And lastly, they do plan benefit design. A formulary is an approved list of medications that a plan will cover. So they will help structure and determine which drugs would be beneficial based on clinical evidence and cost effectiveness data. So in this field of managed care, there's less to no direct patient or healthcare interaction. A lot of it's indirect and this profession is very project based as you can see. So if that's something that you're interested in, then this career path might be for you. Oftentimes if you pursue managed care, you can either do a residency or you can do a fellowship. So for fellowship, generally research-based and typically two years in length, sometimes completed after a PGY-1 or PGY-2 residency, or instead of one. Now, what about industry pharmacy? So what does an industry pharmacist do? Well, they're involved in the research, design, development, and testing of new medicines and treatments, ensuring their safety and quality. So one of the main reasons to consider a career in the pharmaceutical industry is the potential for a scientific discovery and innovation. So according to this pharmaceutical journal, where it goes into the day in the life of an industry pharmacist, in the article she explains, my role is varied, challenging, and professionally fulfilling. 
Industrial pharmacy offers a wide choice of career structure no matter what area you join, including clinical trials, departments, drug information, regulatory affairs, or marketing. Whatever takes your fancy, the industry has a lot to offer. So now this one's also a very unique pharmacy path where you know you don't really interact with any patients or providers. In this article, she explains her day-to-day. -day. So the day begins roughly around 8.30. It's a pretty flexible work schedule. She checks her emails, goes through her morning routine, and it's comprised of various meetings. She's meeting with chemists, bi biologists, toxicologists, external visitors from academia or industry. It looks like she has a lot of duties and responsibilities that are assigned to her. Uh, looks like it's very task-based and project-based. The easiest path to pursue industry pharmacy is to pursue an industry fellowship. However, it's still possible to break into industry field with that one, but it's a lot harder. You'll need to do a lot of research and to do a lot of networking. There's also compounding pharmacy. Compounding is the creation of a pharmaceutical preparation or drug by licensed pharmacists to meet the unique needs of an individual patient, either human or animal, when a commercially available drug does not meet those needs. So for some examples of some compounds they would make would be capsules, injectables, syrups, creams, serums, ointments, supplements, and gels. But why do people use compounding pharmacies? So when your doctor prescribes a medication not available in a standard dose, your compound pharmacy can adjust the dosage to that appropriate amount. So for example, if you need 50 milligrams of a certain drug that's only available as a 30 milligram, you might be trying to cut your medication in half, but some patients are not able to do that with their dexterity issues, um, vision issues. So it's much easier um, to go through a compounding pharmacy where they can make the exact uh, drug and dosage that you need. Hi, thank you for watching. If you like this type of video, please comment down below or just let me know what other videos you'd like to see.